Today is January 5th, 2021. Uh, this is the DevSync. And uh, so we've just been having a little bit of a discussion on some debugging problems. Um, sounds like we might need to get back into that after this uh, check-in here. But uh, let's just go around and see uh, what the nominal status is of things. Uh, Gez, we'll start with you. Um, <laughs> kind of a bit of time on that debugging stuff. <laughs> um, uh, we also finally got merged in the um, the fix to that enclosure service, um, and so that I didn't forget about it. Um, I did a quick PR to do the same thing to all the other services, um, since thought, you know part of the point was pulling out some common code and and sticking it in a method so that we had um, you know fix things once and it improves everything. Um, uh, okay, seems to think that it is good, which um, I, you know it's always impressive, always surprising when you code good the first time around. So shouldn't shouldn't be the case. <laughs> um, uh, uh, can't really remember much. Uh, we um we had a good chat with um Derek and I had a good chat with the Blue Systems crew around the new onboarding flow um, and the particularly around the Wi-Fi setup and and the interplay between the two ways of setting up Wi-Fi. Um, so uh, there's some some things we have to overcome, but they all seem doable. So um, I'm going to chat with Panacore about that next and try and get all that into place. Uh, that's about me, I think, for the moment. OK. Uh, Derek? Yeah, so yesterday, last night, uh, it worked a bit on, on that flow and got it to a good kind of spot for the next revision uh, with Gas, And um, I need to get it uh, kind of in a more presentable format to Pantacore, so I need to uh, still get that done today. Uh, but then the rest of the day, um, I've been doing some audio cleanup, um, the raw audio from the Kusal recordings the uh, end of last year. Um, just a lot of editing had to be done to get those into individual audio clips that we can use. Uh, so I've just been cleaning up audio mostly today. Uh, I did spend a little bit of time on uh, the shipment stuff, and it's a pain. <laughs> but I got it figured out uh, how to send uh, to China via DHL with the new requirements that the government passed in the last couple of months. And um, so that shipment to our assembler should should arrive on Monday, Michael. I will send you the the tracking number. Um, unfortunately, that was the fastest way, uh, fastest we could get it there. Okay, is Monday. Uh, so, yep. The the plastics are moving. The ship date is February nine. Is when we're going to get these off the line. So, I think we're we're in good shape to hit that date. Okay. Um, I do have some stuff from Kevin, but uh, they delivered. They tried to deliver very early today at the um, at the main the office in Lawrence, and no one was in yet. So I'll go pick that up tonight at the UPS station here in town. Um, yeah, so that's that's been me. Okay, good. Um, Chris Vera. So I spent my day banging my head against the wall with this uh, microphone thing some more. Uh, I think I've I've hit the brick wall. Um, I, there's one, one, one more I can contribute to the problem. Um, but uh, so I was gonna see today if there's anything else I could contribute. And if not, I was gonna move on to uh, back onto the lake word stuff. So, so my day tomorrow will be either more banging or um, implementing a materialized view in the uh, like word stuff. Got it. Okay. Ken. Who would you call? 
uh, it's your turn, Ken. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I got the uh, the port audio uh, debugging from port audio working. It's pretty extensive. I had to hack up the make file and rebuild it, and now I see it coming out. Um, I'm going on the assumption that whatever hypervisor they're using, Pantavisor, goodness knows what container system they're using, it's engendering some overhead that's causing the low-level calculations to be wrong because the host isn't able to get back fast enough. So I'm uh, pursuing that, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure I can work around their problem and fix the issue uh, with configuration by this time tomorrow night. Um, but again, you know, that that's kind of not that great to begin with if they're engendering that kind of overhead on the system. Uh, but, you know, whatever it takes to get it working. One of the things that confuses me, and, and I don't know, I, I can't seem to get a straight answer out of them is, um, I saw this today, you know, like I asked, I guess Chris was asking, let me bring it up and I'll tell you what confuses me. Um, uh, just hold on, but anyway, all right, so I'm confused. Should we run as a uh, Mycroft or as root or what? Should we not do sudo su? And he says, you need to be Mycroft user to run system control, user stop Mycroft. But I'm pretty sure Chris was, and it's not working. Um, and he says, if it says root at localhost, you're root, but we're not root. So I don't know what he's talking about. Um, and it's a little hard to, to figure it out. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that, the issue is that it was it was using sudo on the system control. And so uh, but wait a minute. Was he using, all I asked Chris was, are you doing su dash l Mycroft? And I, I did not understand his answer at all. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to be running it as root or not. And then I don't know if the system D is loading them as services before it gets to start Mycroft. And if it is, and it's running start Mycroft. Is that why I'm seeing it running multiple versions of it? Or I just can't get a straight answer. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, really they are running system D services. Yeah. Right. So then how how is Mycroft my, start Mycroft working? It's in the boot up sequence. So if they started them as system D services, then why are we running start Mycroft? Uh, you mean the shell script? Yeah, that doesn't run them as system D services. It runs them as command line. Anyway, I don't think I don't know that that's the issue. I'm hoping they didn't make a mistake that simple. Uh, I'm assuming it's down in what's called the period size. Uh, and when I look at the debug output, I think I'm on the right track. It says host suggested what it does. Is it tries to figure things out like latency and number of frames. And it says suggested host buffer period 2016. Then later it says a determined period of 2016 is less than the minimum of 6,000. It's a big difference. Uh, and then it says adjusting to 6,000. It sets the minimum and maximum period to 6,000. And I just don't think that's right. So um, I'll figure it out. There's formulas for figuring all these numbers out. I just have to, now that I have the data, I have to spend some time going through and setting them and testing them. And that's why I think I can work around it. But shouldn't have to, but, but maybe it'll be working by tomorrow night. That's my update. That's what I've been working on and what I'm okay. working on. Um, all right. Well, there's kind of a yellow flag in there for me in that um, maybe Gez understands this, but you know, you, you raised the, the question of are the Mycroft uh, executables running as system D services or are they running as regular processes? You know, and I certainly don't want to double those up. So if it looks like that's happening, that certain, you know, we should raise that with Panacore and see. Well, say. what do you think, Gev? Can you speak to that? In other words, we're still running start mycroft.sh, correct? No, they're, they're not, like, if we run that, then we're running it. And that's when they get doubled up. But they should only be running a system D services. So you think that the Blue System guys took out the call to start Mycroft? Um, there's... Let me it's certainly part of their bring let me go in and let me go in and like find the exact lines where it gets called. Okay, so that sounds like we can to, we can follow up. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I'm losing everybody. I'm kind of slow. Some people are slow. Uh, but my point is, Gaz, why don't you and I stay on after this and let's discuss that? 
That sounds great. Josh, any updates aside from the one you already gave us? No, nothing significant. The, uh, uh, I'm still twiddling, waiting for a video of a working Mark II dev kit. So, um, and then your plastics are moving. So other than that. All right. Uh, Chris and I are doing a, a review of the, Chris Adair and I are doing a review of the, uh, making sure that every single last part and screw and whatever got ordered. And then finally, uh, uh, we, you and I had a good discussion this morning about milestones for 2021. And I think that we're in alignment. And then finally, you've got me looking at silicon that can do some of the stuff we're supposed to be doing here. So I'm going to go chase some of that. All right. Great. Um, yeah, so the last of the hardware uh, to get ordered for the dev kits, as Josh mentioned, was the the plastic enclosures. So um, those are the last pieces that are coming in as well. Uh, there may be a number of dev kits, if not everybody chooses to, uh, to upgrade, that we can ship before those plastics come in. So um, I want to get a call set up with Joe and uh, Derek and Chris, uh, at least. Um, and uh, just make sure we have a good solid plan on uh, when the uh, uh, fulfillment, uh, various steps in the fulfillment are gonna happen. So there's a lot of that that can be prepped so it'll be ready to go when the plastics arrive. So Yeah, we should get Johnny in on that too because he's gonna be handling shipment to, to Joe. Okay. Um, all right, well, we'll get that set up for tomorrow. Um, that's uh yeah that's the extent of my update for today uh, the board i got today is a rev 5 is that correct yes I should say and, rev that, five on it. and that should be software i haven't had a chance to open the box yet i've been kind of busy so um that uh should be software compatible there should be no changes i should be able to plug and play that pull out the rev 4 plug in the rev 5 and it magically works right that is my understanding yes um, okay, good. You may have some difficulty. Did he ship you a new plastic enclosure or no? I'm, I'm not using an enclosure right now, so it's okay. Okay. Yeah. There's some he of the did not. mounting holes he did not. removed. Okay. I'll get you a new one, Ken. It's okay. Then... It's okay. I, I, until I get this software bug fixed, it's better I don't have an enclosure anyway. It's easier to get at everything and change stuff. So, yeah, but I'll. Well, you can get it to me, you know, when it, when you have time, and I'll put it together. But I'm just saying, it's I'd like to get this thing working before I button it up. Sure. Okay. Uh, any other issues? Um, how are we going to resolve Chris Vare's uh, dilemma as to what to work on next? Maybe you can stay on with uh, Gez and Ken and see if there's some way to contribute there. And if not, then um, move back over to the wake word. Okay. Great. Well, um, so it sounds like you guys are having a productive, dis productive discussion when I joined. Uh, just, you know, you don't have to wait till these calls to get together and, and chat. So just wanna, I'm just going to keep harping on that. No, so, but we do, we, do, we do chat during the day. You, you can see in the uh, dev team and in the Panacore. Oh, yeah. No, I, the, the online chat is one thing. But, you know, face-to-face -face and verbally is, is, uh, can be higher bandwidth. Well, that's what that's what Gaz and I are going to do now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, catch you again tomorrow.